Welcome to the cloud quiz. In this video, I want to do a quiz about clouds with you. I want to also share my knowledge about clouds, how to read them, how to understand them and help you to become a better cross country pilot. So let's jump straight into it. So we are flying here in the Ticino. It's a booming day and we are going along this ridge and soon enough I want to climb up again. And in order to assess my chances where could I find a thermal, I look at the clouds. And I look how many clouds I can see above this ridge. And straight away you can see this big one in the front. And you can also see a smaller one a bit further in the back that also appears to be above this ridge. So these are the two main clouds we have. These are the two main chances to actually find lift above this ridge line. So now we have to find out which one is more likely to work. And so we look first at the closer one that's just ahead of me. And this one has a fair size, so that is quite important. You can see around all the other clouds are, have a fair size too. So this is kind of a check. But then look at the cloud itself. So it, it's quite a few different wisps. It's not really defined. It has not a flat bottom. It doesn't look very organized. So on a very dry day, this would not really concern me. But on this day, you can see in general, the good climbs have good clouds and here it just doesn't look so good. So I'm not so convinced about this cloud if it would work. And this cloud actually besides that has another problem, but this we will just see towards the end of the video. So I don't believe that I can find a really good thermal in this cloud here just because it's not organized enough it doesn't really give the feel that it will go up because it has these holes it doesn't has a flat bottom it has many like not concentrated wisps so it looks more like it would be dying so then i focus on the second chance which is this cloud in the back a bit further down the ridge and there you can see it has a fair size to it as well so this is a a check and we can see that it has a quite a bit lean so it goes from the bottom left to the top right so this means there is quite a bit of wind in the altitude coming from the north so from the left to the right in this image here and indeed this was the case on this day so already from this cloud we can judge the wind so up high we have some north wind and then what I like about the cloud is it has a relatively flat bottom and some development on the top. So this looks actually much better. So it's not like it doesn't has holes like the cloud we looked at before. So I think overall this cloud looks much more promising. And now we have identified a cloud that could be potentially good. But we still have to understand where we would head in order to catch a thermal. And for this, I look at the source of this cloud, or better, the source of the hot air. And in order to find the source, I just assess the slopes. And usually the slope should be about 90 degrees into the sun so that it can actually get warmed up. So here, this is super easy. Of course, we are in the south side or this little bit shaping, like you can see the slope shapes around a bit towards the southwest because it's probably already a bit in the afternoon so this is probably the best orientation that we can have so this heats up the slope but that's not it so we know that this produces warm air but then the warm air starts to rise and moves up the slope and then it will move up the slope until it cannot move any higher and usually that's the ridge line or the peak or if you have a lot of snow in the spring it's often the snow line so there it will trigger and re be released from the ground. So from this point, which is the ridge line here in front of me, there will be the trigger point. And then mentally I, co I connect the cloud to this trigger point. And by doing this, I will have the trajectory of the thermal. So on this imaginary line from the cloud to the trigger point, 
there will be my thermal. So this is the point where I should head to. This is very important, especially if you have wind. Otherwise, it's sometimes difficult to tell where you should head. You can see this cloud. It has a relatively large um, bottom surface. And you could go a bit more to the left or to the right. But here, I know the wind comes from the north. I know the um, thermal has to be released from this top, from this um, peak there. And it goes up to the cloud. So I will find the thermal more to the left of this cloud um, than to the right. So this is a very important information that um, we can read from this cloud. So what is really cool is that we can now use the time lapse and we go back and forth and in the time lapse it's much much more apparent what the movements of the clouds are. So we can back up all the claims that I just proposed to you and have a look at how the clouds actually move. So on backing up, watch the clouds. You can see how they disappear and you can actually see where they form. So let's go forward one more time. And you can see they form on the left and drift towards the right. So the active thermal is coming up from the left. So let's go back one more time. Watch the clouds. Yes, you can see the development to the left. So I'm going to stop here. And you saw that this first cloud, I was not convinced about it. And I told you there was another problem. So if we look at it or if we looked at it in the time lapse, you could see that it actually forms way to the left. So this cloud is not coming from our ridge, but it comes from the ridge towards the left, so more to the north. So the thermal is actually triggered from this ridge here and not from our ridge. But just by looking at the cloud, we could see that it's not well defined, but it was difficult to guess from which ridge it actually came from. Of course, also the position tells you a bit what is going on. So it's a bit more towards the north. You would expect it a bit more towards the south with the wind. But overall, it's not so an easy call to make. And we, you could just see that actually above the ridge, it was not so well organized. It didn't have a flat bottom. And hence, therefore, it um, looked like it was already dying. So these wisps, it looked like it was dying. They were not forming, they were not growing. And this makes sense because the cloud formed on the left, moved over and dies here in the back. So there's no new air, no new thermal coming up. And hence um, is, is decomposing. And on the last one, you can see um, it's growing very rapidly so the thermal is coming up from the peak from the trigger point as we said it's reaching the top and then it gets drifted with the wind towards the south so it's really interesting to watch this um, whole sequence so we can go back and look another time one more time we can also go again forward look at the movement of the clouds this is very difficult to assess uh, when you don't have a, a when you don't have the this time lapse when you actually fly in real time but you can look at if the clouds are flat if they have a flat bottom and if they are well shaped in order to assess which one you should take i hope you learned something from this video if you want to continue watch this flight check out my video on the complete flight it's um, over there and otherwise, I'm trying to make some more of these cloud quiz um, videos. I hope you learned something and see you next time.